Mick, tell me what we're doing today. What up, y'all? We're doing a book haul. Oh! Good job. Is that what you wanted me to do? <laughs> no, I forgot oh. about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of these books are from a book outlet order. So, I w I'm supposed to do a book haul every month. I kind of failed. And I don't think we did one in November. No, I December. We did one in November. I don't think we? we did one in, oh, December. in December. I think, like... We, we did it one at the beginning of November. If we didn't, sue me, okay? I'm sorry, but uh, whatever. 2000, 2020. It's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a hard time saying 2020 because yeah. I love 2020. I just love how it sounds. It's everything about it I like. 2020, zero, two, zero. it's just cool numbers. And you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a new start of a new um, decade, decade. Um, and it's exciting. And um, 2020, though, I keep wanting to say, like, wait, what? A lot of these books I found on Book Outlet for a really good price because I... Is that why they sales. all have dots on them? Yep. And some of them I don't know much about, so this is going to be fun. Huh. I got The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. That's a chess game like part piece. I've heard some pretty good stuff about this. This dude looks kind of... Old and young. young at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. My Fawny Thomas awakes in a London park surrounded by dead bodies. With her memory gone, she must trust the instructions left by her former self in order to survive. She quickly learns that she is a rook, a high-level operative in a secret agency that protects the world from supernatural threats. This is totally that, that move show where the kid shows up outside the White House and he has, like, his memories erased. It's an anime and he, like, had the cell phones, and you have, like, time stamp. Like, Eden, the Eden show? Battling to save herself, my my fawn, my fawn we. What does this mean? Why do they say that? Why do they keep saying that? That's her name. My phone. My, my phone. Me fawn we, my fawn we. Will encounter a person with four bodies, a woman who can enter her dreams, children transformed into deadly fighters, and terrifyingly vast conspiracy. I've just heard good stuff about this. This seems super weird. And it seems and weird. Anime. It seems anime. Intriguing. I like it. What's this? Something about, I saw like X-Men. Something too. about X-Men over here. <laughs> X-Men. What's this? Wholly refreshing if you like Harry Potter, Buffy, X-Men, or any assorted series that mixes humor with the supernatural. I'm sold. This seems cool. <laughs> Why didn't we go over this before we did your TBR? Because this seems pretty good, though, but it's kind of too long. 500 pages, roughly. A little bit less than 500. Yeah. Then I got on Book Outlet, The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. I like that name. Book dust. We're like two for two right now. Let's see how the synapse goes. A vividly imagined fantasy of deadly court intrigue. No, read the synapses, not the... Born of a marriage made only as part of a treaty, the youngest son of the emperor has lived his entire life in exile, far from his father and the imperial court. He knows little of the rituals of the empire. He knows less about the deadly intrigue that surrounds the government and the court. But when his father and three half-brothers die suddenly, Maya is summoned to take his rightful place on the throne. For Maya, life in the capital is a bewilderingly daily test. He is surrounded by strangers, he has no way to know who he can trust, and before long he discovers his father and half-brothers' deaths were no accident. The ship was tampered with and the crash was murder. Mm -hmm. A remarkably hopeful story of a single descent, a decent person doing his best in a difficult situation. I like court books and like just stuff like that. So that's probably why I chose this. And it got good reviews from what I remember. You're not sold on that. Let's go. Outrun the Moon by Stacey Lee. Not going to lie, this was an absolute cover buy and it was $1.50. So what? I hope it's good. Look at that cover. It looks Chinese. I don't know. It looks amazing. And it was so cheap. San Francisco, 1906. I was wrong. Not Chinese. San Franciscan. 15-year-old Mercy Wong is determined to break from the poverty of Chinatown. Am I being racist assuming that she is Chinese now? This is Chinatown. Chinatown. Not racist. Thank you very much. Determined Please and thank you. Determined to break the poverty of Chinatown, to break from, and an education at St. Clair's School for Girls is her best hope. Although St. Clair's is off limits to all but the wealthiest white girls. Mercy gains admittance through a mix of cunning and a little bribery, only to discover that getting in was the easy part. Not to be un outdone, no, undone, excuse me, by a bunch of spoiled heiresses. 
historic earthquake rocks San Francisco, destroying Mercy's home and school. Now she's forced to uh, wait with her classmates for their families in a temporary park encampment. Fires rage. Da 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 da. Stacey Lee masterfully crafts another remarkable novel set against a unique historical backdrop. Not for you, but it might be cool. Excuse me? You like that? Um, it sounds not good. <laughs> I got this book on Book Outlet as well. It was like a few bucks, or no, probably like six bucks. The Wife Between Us. I honestly just bought this because the so many people between... talk about it. It's like a thriller type story. Adult novel. I like the cover, the lips, they meet, but the eyes are wrong. It's like an angle this way and an angle this way. When you, there's no synopsis on here. It's in the back. No, it's not. Right there. Nope. Right there. Nope. Right there. Stop. It's on the front. You just read the whole book and then synopsis. When you read this book, you will make many assumptions. You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she's obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who's about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle. Assume nothing. Twisted and deliciously chilling, the wife between us deftly explores the hidden complexities of marriage and the dangerous truths we ignore in the name of love. Read between the lines. I just heard it's really good. That's all I gotta say. We forgot to look at the naked of the last one. Oh, yeah. We like looking at the nakeds. This is boring. They're like the same color. On the... No, they're not. Not at all. Both boring. What the hell is that? So I got this randomly sent to me. It's Strange Planet by Nathan Pyle. These are like, I'm comic. sure you've seen. They're like seen... comic strips, right? Yeah. I've they look like me seeks. I'm sure you've seen these all over like Twitter and uh, Never pretty much Twitter. Never seen it. And Never seen one of those. It's like a famous comic thing that I see around all the time. And basically they sent me a little book of them. It was kind of cool. I show, find these show like, the inside, my dude. I find these like sometimes really good, and sometimes they're just like over my head, and I don't really get them. But yeah, they're usually four square comics. In fact, it looks like they're always like that. Um, but yeah. Unless that one keeps going. Oh, maybe. For example, this one says, "What fin fun is it to stand in liquid recreational bathing?" And yet, not at all bathing. Oh no, not being cleansed right now. The opposite of cleansed. We must cleanse ourselves afterward. I'm going to the danger side. Okay, I will stay here and not do that. Greetings. Greetings. Those is, are two separate oh. ones. Yeah, they're weird. I don't get it at all. Yeah, sometimes I don't really get them either. But it's like it's like the, the language that they use. I feel like they're supposed to be aliens. Strange planet. Oh. So they, they kind of like... It's like a commentary on like weird things because like... Humans we, do. Like we okay. go swimming, but like why? So that one was about swimming. Two yeah. people in the pool. So I, now I get it. So it's like we're swimming, but we're actually getting dirtier because the water is disgusting. Yeah. So then you got to take a bath afterward. Okay. It's just awkward. Yeah. But I get it. But I get it. <laughs> but I guess it's supposed to be kind of awkward and like strange. Yeah. All right. It's called Strange Planet. All right. Touche, sir. Touche, touche, <laughs> Nathan W. Pyle. Then I picked this up on Book Outlet also, Witchwood by Tahara Mafi. Um, this is really shiny. Okay. I just recently finished Furthermore, and I did like it. I think I gave it a three. I've heard that this one is a little darker. Um, it's set in the same type of atmosphere and, atmosphere and world, but it's a separate story, so you don't have to read them together. However, I also hear that there's like cameos, possibly. I don't know. Could be completely wrong. But cameos from whom? Like the last book. Oh, I remember the artwork from the last one. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited for it. It seems like it explores deeper what are you showing topics. Right now? It's like snowflakes. The naked. Show the naked. Or after after you read this. Lately can barely remember the happier times before her beloved mother died. Before her father, driven by grief, lost his wits and his way, she was left as the sole remaining moored shore in the village Witchwood. Des uh, destined to spend her days scrubbing the skins and souls of the dead in preparation for the afterlife. It's become easy to forget and easier still to ignore not only her ever-increasing loneliness, but the way her overworked hands are stiffening and turning silver, just like her hair. 
But soon a pair of familiar strangers appear and Laylee's world is turned upside down as she rediscovers color, magic, and the healing power of friendship. first one was cute. This one seems interesting. Can you not smack my dog in the head, no, please? I didn't. It was my hand. It hit her nosy. Another book outlet one, Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton. I just recently heard about this book, even though it's been out for a while, and people have been kind of talking about it on BookTube lately, so I figured I would give it a shot. It said, long ago, a village made a bargain with the devil to ensure their prosperity with the slaughter... When the slaughter moon rises, the village must sacrifice a young man to the depths of the devil's forest. Only this year, the slaughter moon has risen early. Bound by duty, secrets, and the love they share for one another, Marywen and a spirited witch, Rune, the expected saint, and Arthur, a, resent a restless outcast, will each have a role to play as the devil demands a body to fill the bargain. But the devil these finds, friends find is not the one they expect, and they, and lives they uncover will turn town, I can't English, will turn their town inside out. It sounds interesting and different. Once, I wasn't paying attention. I stopped paying attention. I got the beginning. Once a grace witch made a pact with the devil. If you look back at the video, you'll see that I just like zone out. For... There's a person here. Well, let me see the person. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Naked, please. Ooh. Make, stop smacking my dog on the nose. I my didn't. Dear. You're doing it right now. You just did it again. That's her nose. Look, she doesn't care. She does. <laughs> it has like a her eyes are open right now. She's just staring at you. Purple tree. You can't see it. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this next book. Uh, the Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. I've heard some good things about it. I've heard some bad things about it. So I don't usually like witchy type stories. And I think it is a witchy type story. But... For like a few dollars, I figured I'd give it a shot. Welcome to the cursed town of Sparrow. Two centuries ago, three sisters were sentenced to death, death for witchery. I can't talk to just, them. Just like, slow it down. And action. Welcome to the cursed town of Sparrow. God. Two centuries ago, three sisters were sentenced to, <laughs> to death <laughs> for witchery. <laughs> Stones were tied to their ankles and they were drowned in the deep waters surrounding the town. Now for a brief time each summer, the sisters return, stealing the bodies of three troubled girls so that they may seek their revenge. Use your eyebrows more. Luring boys into Sparrow's Harbor and pulling them under. Why was I doing that? No, but I figured it'd help. Oh. Like many local... Like many... Blah, 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 blah. Eyebrows. You need more eyebrows. Come on. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see how this Why did you buy it? <laughs> Why did you buy it? You're like, I don't know if I'm going to read this. I'll read it. I bought it. We'll see. You need to move your nose, doggy. No, she's okay. She. I mean, it must not bother her. So, I had an arc of this book. And the arc cover was different than this cover. And for some reason, I'm obsessed with this cover. So when Is it, it a lay Miz retelling? retelling? Yeah. I assumed. So because of the French colors. I saw this on Book Outlet. I was like, I need it. Because this cover is gorgeous. And I've heard that this book is really, really good. That's debatable. Shut up. Yes, ma'am. It's Lay Miz and something else. Whoa. Wow. Maps are beautiful. I love maps. I should have been a cartographer. What is on the side? Oh, the, the name. name of the book? What would you expect there to be on, on the side? <laughs> I'm excited to have a hard copy of it. What's on the inside? Letters and words? Whoa. The story's written on the inside? My God. <laughs> Lost Queen by Signe, Signe Pike. Uh, just give up, me. Just give up on reading. I need to today. I'm doing a bad job at this. All these have that nice cracky sound. Don't crack it then. Already being compared to Outlander. All right. Well, I didn't r read Outlander, so. We didn't watch it either. You are about to begin an, an extraordinary adventure in a land of mountains and mist, tradition and superstition. You got this. Langoreth. Eyebrows. And her twin brother, Lelikin, are raised in the old way of the ancestors. Lelikin, I think that's a Pokemon. But the rise of a new religion heralds an era of disruption, bloodshed, and riot. When conflict begins, 
uh, no, when conflict brings the hero Emery's Pendragon hey, to their uh, to her family's door, Langareth finds love in one of his with one of his warriors. Her deep connection to Melguin is forged by enchantment. I I just can't with these, these names. names. Like I'm gonna have to read the name fifty times to finally get it. Why can't it be something easy like Pendragon? It's like two, just two regular words combined into one. That's a D and D last name, by the way. It's a hundred percent what it is. No way, Pendragon was like in. I know Howl's Moving Castle. I get it, but what I'm telling you is that it is a D and D last name. Every D and D character has two words combined to make their last name. Mm. It's a, it's like a thing. Just from my experience, it's like a lot of like classic names, you know. Strong Forge, or something, you know, or like, or Hero like, born. yeah, something. Um, this book also was one that is an adult thriller type novel that I've heard tons of things about, and it was on Book Outlet, so I decided to get it. Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. Pinborough. Wow, wow. the Pin, cover's Pin, creepy. No. Pinborough. Pinborough. Luis, a single mom and secretary, is deeply embarrassed when she discovers that the man who sweet-talked and kissed her in the bar on a rare night out is her new boss, David. And Adele, new to town and lonely, who invited Luis for coffee after they bumped into each other on the street, that's David's wife. From the outside, David and Adele look like a picture-perfect husband and wife, but then why is David so controlling? And why is Adele so scared? As Louise is drawn further into David and Adele's orbit, she uncovers more puzzling questions. The only thing that's crystal clear is that something in this marriage is very, very wrong. But Louise can't guess how wrong or how far a person might go to protect their marriage's secrets. I feel like reading these types of books make me so anxious. I'm like, what are you doing? I don't believe anything you say now. Me? Yeah. <laughs> don't read this book, please. <laughs> I feel really short because this dog is like Elaine and I feel bad like moving her head. Oh, there you mm. go. There you go. Good pup. Then I picked up the entire Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I, I'm sure it has an official trilogy name and I just don't know it. But I figured even if this isn't her best work, it still has to be good, right? I mean, she's such a beautiful writer. She wrote, obviously, everyone knows Strange the Dreamer, Muse of Nightmares, and... Um, I really wanted to read this series, so when they were on Book Outlet for really cheap, I got them. I kind of want to reread Strange the Dreamer. Before the other one? Yeah, because it like, there's a lot that happened in that, and I don't remember. Yeah. You know? This one doesn't say, like, anything about it. Like, I kind of want to go in not knowing, but I don't. Gorgeously written modern fantasy about a forbidden love, an ancient and epic battle, and hope for a world remade. It doesn't say anything. This one's hard to do. Brandon Sanderson writes books that we like to read. The next one may be one, but she looks like she's looking for a different book instead of the Brandon Sanders ad. Because I got two versions of that book. Because, or, do you, and... Do you not know where the second one is? It's over here somewhere. Go get it. So, of course, like most books, I tend to like the UK covers better than the US covers. But I really like this US cover also, so I had to get both. This is the sequel to Skyward. That one's much more dramatic, and it matches the other one that we have. Yeah. Do We have we have this one, though, too, right? We have both, both covers for both. Skyward. But um, it's a sequel to Skyward. Star Sight? And I want to read it soon. Look at how cool this is. Like, does yours have this? No. No. It doesn't have cool pictures. Of space-ish. Ah, but it does have this. True. This is, it's like a toss-up. Like, this has the, uh, the logo there. The, what is it, what are they called? DDF. I feel like I need to reread this one, too. But I don't have time to do that. So. No, I feel like this one was a little bit simpler because it was like... I do remember pretty much yeah, what happened. Yeah. Now uh, that I and I'm sure like any good writer 
gives you a recap of what happened that you need to know, but not just writing in the recap, yeah, yeah. but gives you enough information. Like when there's, you know, it's like, oh, they that's, remind you who this that's my friend John yeah. that, you know, likes to eat waffles, you know, like, like they'll remind you. But in the first book, there's a whole arc about how much he likes to eat waffles and why he likes to eat waffles. But you don't really need to know that in this one. You just need to know that he really likes his freaking waffles. So, yeah. We'll read that this year. We will, right there, dear, dear. Oh, dear. Then, some book of the month picks. So, I got The Silent Patient by Alex Michelades. I've been told that that book is really good. By one of, someone you met, you met someone yes. that was reading this. Yeah, and they were like, it's like the best. They couldn't put it down. They finished it in like a couple days, and it was really good. And I came home, and I was like, what the hell is this book doing on my <laughs> on my counter? And then you were like, oh, that's the book of the month. And I was just like, oh, my goodness yeah well this was a january 2019 when i i like back ordered it because you get on book oh. you get old ones for like 10 bucks there's a face on it with her mouth yeah. ripped off it's weird it seems interesting it says alicia berenson's life is seemingly perfect a famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer she lives in a grand house overlooking a park in one of london's most desirable areas one evening her husband gabriel returns home late from work and alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into something far grander, a mystery that captures the public imagination and casts Alicia into notoriety. The price of her art skyrockets and she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids and spotlight at the Grove, a secure psychiatric unit in North London. Criminal psychotherapist Theo is captivated by Al Alicia's story and jumps at the opportunity to work with her. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband takes him down a path more unexpected. Seems really cool, right? Different. Pretty excited to read it. Another book of the month one. This one was a December 2019 one. I think this book was one of the ones that they released early um but yeah it's like the wives by taryn fisher a lot of people have read this or are going to read it soon so i'm sure you know a bit about it but it says you've never met the other wives none of you know each other and because of this unconventional arrangement you can see your husband only one day a week but you love him so much that you don't care or at least that's what you've told yourself but one day, while you're doing laundry, you find a scrap of paper in his pocket, an appointment reminder for a woman named Hannah, and you just know it's another one of the wives. You thought you were fine with your arrangement, but you can't help yourself. You track her down, and under false pretenses, you strike up a friendship. Hannah has no idea who you really are. Then Hannah starts showing up to your office, or showing up to your coffee dates with telltale bruises, and you realize she's being abused by her husband, who of course is also your husband but you've never known him to be violent ever. It's weird, right? Seems like another anxiety book. <laughs> Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This was a July book of the month pick. These are the only rules for Jules' new job as an apartment sitter for the at the Bartholomew, one of Manhattan's most glamorous and secretive buildings. Recently heartbroken and in just plain broke, Jules is captivated by the splendor of her surroundings and accepts the terms ready to leave her past life behind. As she gets to know the residents and the staff, Jules finds herself drawn to fellow apartment sitter Ingrid, who comfort comfortingly reminds her of her sister who vanished. Da -da 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 -da. She's finding searching for the truth about Ingrid's disappearance. Okay, I guess she disappeared. I hear this book's pretty good. I feel like this book doesn't match this cover at all. The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Soon after her 25th birthday, Libby Jones returns home from work to find the letter she's been waiting for her entire life. She rips it open with one driving thought, I'm finally going to know who I am. She learns not only the identity of her parents, but also that she's the sole inheritor of their abandoned mansion on the banks of the Thames in London, a uh, fashionable Chelsea neighborhood. In home, or no, the home, even in its dilapidated state, is worth millions. Everything that Libby's life is in Libby's life is about to change. What she doesn't know is that others have been waiting for this day as well. And although they've been in hiding, they are now heading her way. Nearly 25 years ago, police were called to 16 Chain Walk 
uh, with reports of a baby crying. When they arrived, they found a healthy 10-month-old safe and sound in the upstairs bedroom. In the kitchen, three dead bodies, all dressed in black, were seemingly posed next to a hastily scrawled note. The four other children reported to live at uh, Shane Walk were gone. In the family upstairs, the best-selling author, blah, 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 uh, propulsive story of two families living in a house with a dark, with the darkest of secrets. This one's like literally the opposite of that book, isn't it? Or no? Colors? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they messed it up. They were supposed to put this one on that one. I like the two-tone though. Like they just look so much better. Two-tone. This one's a pretty old book of the month one also. It was September. Jesus. How many book of the months did you get? Maybe we haven't done a book haul in a while. No, I, I, I've been getting multiple ones because they're cheap, but I've pretty much now gotten all of the ones that I want, so I'm probably only going to get, like, one a month. The Chestnut Man by Soren Feistrup. If you find one, he has already found you. A psychopath is terrorizing Copenhagen. His calling card is Chestnut Man, a handmade doll made of matchsticks and two chestnuts which he leaves at bloody crime scenes. Examining the dolls, forensics makes a shocking discovery. A fingerprint belonging to a young girl, a government minister's daughter, who's been kidnapped and murdered a year ago. A tragic coincidence or something more twisted. To save innocent lives, a pair of detectives must put aside their differences to piece together the chestnut man's gruesome clues because it's clear that the madman is on a mission that's far from over and no one is safe. You really are into like... Oh, you're getting a lot of adult books lately, though. I just like... I'm That's honestly why. just getting sick of YA lately, and I, I've been wanting to just read more adult. You notice that this is a man? No. Look at it. Arms. Kinda. What else would it be? Then I oh, got... there you go. Yeah. See, it looks like a man there. I know these things. Then I got The Whisper Man by what's, Alex What's North. up with these men? Why so many men? If you leave a door half open, soon you'll hear the whisper spoken. After the sudden Ooh, death that of, rhymed. <laughs> after the sudden death of his wife, Tom Kennedy believes a fresh start will help him and his young son, Jake, heal. A new beginning, a new house, a new town, Featherbank. But the town has a dark past. Twenty years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents. Until Frank Carter was finally caught, he was nicknamed the Whisper Man, for he would lure his victims out by whispering at their windows at night. Just as Tom and Jake settle into their new home, a young boy vanishes. His disappearance bears an unnerving resemblance to Frank Carter's crimes, reigniting old rumors that he prayed with an accomplice. Now detectives Amanda Beck and Pete Willis must find the boy before it's too late, even if that means Pete has to revisit his great foe in prison, the Whisper Man. And then Jake begins acting strangely. He hears a whispering at his window. This seems so cool. Like, weird. I got this book sent to me by, uh, I actually won this on a Goodreads thing, Where Dreams Descend. Says that it's a Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera. Oh, thanks. Step right up to a spectacularly haunting debut novel infused with magic, mayhem, power, and passion. It literally doesn't say anything else. Ew, there's a paper in that. Yeah. She was more than a mask without a name. Kalia is a 17-year-old showgirl determined to make her mark as the greatest show magician captivated by the allure of the stage she sets her sights on the lost city of glorian where passion and chaos both drive her forward and threaten to consume her then we have the toll by neil schusterman schusterman i hear it said both ways which is the third book in the scythe series as a million people know and this one came out not too long ago september no november and we haven't read it yet but we will read it this year. We read the other ones last year. Or, 18, right? Did we? I don't know. Now, I... The thing is too far away. We'll never know. Um, This one's long. 600 pages long. This is also on my, my list of books that I need to read. It this is? Year. Oh, no. I'm going to be reading so many big books, it's ridiculous. But we need to read this. Because you really liked the other ones, right? I liked them. A decent amount. So you, you want to continue? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This book comes out in February. 
Sword of Fire by Catherine Kerr. Ooh, Sword of Fire. It's like sort of fire, but not quite fire. The bards are the people's voice and their sword. All over the kingdom of Devery, the common people are demanding reform of the corrupt law courts. In Aberwyn, the situation catches fire when Gwerbrit, second in authority only to the High King, allows a bard to starve to death rather than hear their grievances. A bard? Like a singing bard? I would guess. Like Dandelion? Guildwoman Alyssa, a student at the local scholars' collegium, and Lady Davina, um, the Gwerbrit's own daughter, know that evidence exists to overthrow the so-called traditional legal system. If they can only get it into the right hands. You're bored. I'm bored? Just sounds like a typical fantasy novel. Um, did you get my joke? What? At the beginning? I don't know. What did you say? The name of the, of the thing. Dandelion? No, the name of the book. The, the book. Sword of Fire. Yeah. I uh, know. I guess I didn't get your joke. And I, I said, it's not quite fire. It's just sort of fire. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> uh, I thought it was hilarious. Then I got this book sent to me. War's Ending by AJ She looks like Park. Chobits. Why? Like her ears. I guess I can. That looks like her ears. Yeah, yeah, That looks yeah. like ears. A courageous noblewoman, a mysterious stranger, and a war that may destroy them both. As the king's niece... Why do people have such weird names? Shalri can't wait to explore her kingdom's colonies with her uncle. But when she's badly injured in a savage raid and abducted by mysterious masked horsemen, she's stunned when her captors heal her wounds. As she adjusts her precon... Really, dog? You stop her? As she adjusts her preconceptions, a terrifying attempt on her life reveals that her own people are trying to kill her. Kalik expects to die fighting a hopeless war like his father before him. When he helps Shallery piece together the clues behind the assassination attempt, her very presence escalates tension between the kingdom and the colony. Seems like I have like a lot of like politically, like fantasy political books. I know, that's why I have nothing to say about these things. I have no idea what this book is. Iridi... Eridani's Crown by Alex Schwarzman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you said fart. Schwarzman. Spartman. Um, it says advanced copy, but when does it come out? After the date that you got that. I guess so. Cursed by prophecy, corrupted by power. When Eridani's parents are murdered and their kingdom is seized by a traitorous duke, she plans to run. After she suffers yet another uh, unendurable loss, the lure of revenge pulls her back. Eridani's brilliance as a strategist offers her a path to vengeance and the throne, but success may mean becoming everything she hates. To survive, she must sway religious zealots, outwit ambitious politicians... <laughs> and confront bloodthirsty warlords, all with few allies and fewer resources. Resources. La, 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 la. I stopped listening. Why are you at, so mean? I stopped listening at farts. Oh, my God. Everyone you know and trust will come to betray you. Again, it's another, like, political fantasy. Yeah. Poli those poli are, like... Poli <laughs> at the very... Those are popular lately, apparently. No, they're not. You were just into it. You found one and you were like, like Woo! I guess this is what I read now. Um, I've heard some pretty good stuff about this book. It's called Mazes of Power by Juliet Wade. It comes out next month. <gasps> this debut work of soci sociological science fiction allows a deadly battle for succession where brother is pitted against brother in a singular chance to win power and influence for their family. The cavern city of Pelismara has stood for thousands, for a thousand years. The great families of the nobility cling to the myths of their golden age while the city's technology wanes. When a fever strikes and the eminence dies, 17-year-old Tagoret is pushed to represent his family in the competition for heir to the throne. To win would give him the power to rescue his mother from his abusive father and marry the girl he loves. But the struggle for power distorts everything in this highly stratified society. And the fever is still loose among the inbred susceptible nobles. Another political 
book. <laughs> but I have heard good stuff about that one. This book I got because it's the author of The Turn of the Key. And I liked that book. So I got The Death of Mrs. Bustaway. I think I got this on Book Outlet. How come, like, books don't have synopses? Like, literally. There's no synopsis on this. <laughs> what? 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 You poor teen. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's about a woman who, I think it's a woman, uh, gets this thing, or get... It's she, 8 o'clock. I'm pretty sure this book is about this woman who finds out that she's inheriting a ton of money from someone and it's not supposed to be her, but she takes the money. Yeah, I'd and do yeah. that too. That'd be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, somebody that I don't know died and I got money from them. That's not so bad. <gasps> the Missing Season by Gillian French. All of her books seem like so intriguing to me and then I buy them on like book outlet and then I never read them. So I need to Oh, I thought you were going to say, all her books seem so great and then I buy them and they suck. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. I hear mixed stuff sometimes. What the heck? Oh, it's, it's bent? Yeah. There's something in the marshes outside the town of Pender. Whenever another kid goes missing in October, the town's adults are quick to offer excuses. Overdose, train accident. But the Pender kids know what is really behind it. A horrific monster they have named the Mumbler. That's what Clara's new crew tells her when she moves to town. Bree and Sage, who take her under their wings, spirited Trace, who has taken the lead on this year's Halloween prank war, and Magnetic Kincaid, whose devil-may-care attitude and air of mystery are impossible for Clara to resist no matter how hard she tries. Clara doesn't actually believe in the mumbler, not the way Kincaid does, but as Halloween gets closer and tensions build in the town, it's hard to shake the feeling that there's really something dark and dangerous. Ooh. Um, it seems creepy. Yeah. And I hope there actually is a mumbler. Because that's what always bums me out about I those know. types of books. Is like, you get to the end and it was just like, it was <laughs> it was the old mailman that used to live here. You know? It's, just it's like, never like something paranormal. And, and then he's like, and if it wasn't for you meddling kids. I've heard super mixed things about this book. But... Book outlet once again. It was on sale. The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. <laughs> I don't know. I left. Uh, Kieran. Kieran grew up in the slums of Kor, a thief and a minstrel son raised on tales of long lost princes and magnificent quests. When he's claimed against his will as the missing son of a treasonous prince, Kieran finds himself at the mercy of his new family's ruthless power plays and political ambitions. Practically a prisoner, he discovers that being a long-lost prince is nothing like what the storybooks have promised. The storybooks lied about a lot of other things, too. Dragons, demons, gods, prophecies, true love, and how the hero always wins. Then again, maybe he isn't the hero after all, for Kieran is not destined to save the Empire. He's destined to destroy it. Like, I think it sounds cool. But like I said, it does get mixed. Are, are you views. telling me that there isn't dragons, demons, I don't know. heroes? So if there isn't, then why would I want to read it? No idea. So you know this book was seventeen ninety seven. I think I paid like five bucks or six bucks. At some point. I've been told. How what have you been told, Mick? By so many people Tell that I all need to read told. this book. Yeah, she needs to read it. The Curse of Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. The next one's coming out soon. I didn't know if I would like it. It's essentially a Beauty and the Beast retelling from what oh, I hear. Oh, God. Why don't we just retell the same story mm -hmm. over and over? Why don't we come up with a new story there was a while? I hear it's done very well and it's very unique. And literally every single person I know, including several of my people on Discord, have given it five stars. What so, do you mean, your people? They're my people. That's true, they are. So cursed by a powerful enchantress to repeat the autumn of his 18th year, Prince Ren the heir to Emberfall, thought he could be saved easily if a girl fell for him. But that was before he turned into a vicious beast hell-bent on destruction, before he destroyed his castle, his family, and every last shred of hope. Nothing has ever been easy for Harper, with her father long gone, her mother dying, and her brother constantly underestimating her because of her cerebral palsy. Harper learns, learned to be tough enough to survive. When she tries to save a stranger on the streets of Washington, D.C., she's pulled into a magical world. Harper doesn't know where she is or what to believe. A prince, a curse, a monster. As she spends time with Ren in his enchanted land, she begins to understand what's at stake. 
And as Ren realizes Harper's not just another girl to charm, his hope comes flooding back. I don't know. Like, it just seems oh, like... Oh, I get it. Beauty and the beast. Yeah, but everyone says it's so stinking good. I was like, I was like, I forgot you said that. And then I made a comment about it. And then at the end, I was just like, this sounds like Beauty and the Beast. And then um, I wonder if there's, like, a French guy in it. Because that'd be cool. Oh, my back. I got this arc sent to me. It comes out this month. Blood Countess by Lana Pope. Is it about vampires? Is it, a, is it a vampire book? No one will be spared. She was mesmerizing brilliant royal. Murder was in her blood. Anna has just begun working as a scullery maid for Countess Elizabeth ba Bathory, a woman as enigmatic as she is beautiful. When Elizabeth takes a liking to Anna, uh, she's vaulted to chambermaid status and begins to reside in the countess's private suite far from the filthy drafty servants quarters below for the ambitious anna it's a dream she receives wages generous enough to provide for her family and the lonely calculating countess whose cruel husband is awfully often away at war begins to groom anna as her friend confidant and eventual lover no sooner does elizabeth beguile anna entirely than elizabeth's perfect facade begins to crack when others in her employ disappear, Anna begins to fear the person she's begun to love has crossed over into madness or worse. Okay. The blood splatters are a person. Huh. Didn't notice. Seems like it could be interesting. I also got this sent to me. Um, a final copy of Sisters of Shadow and Light. I like that cover. Sarah B. Larson. Sarah B. Larson, son, what? The night my sister was born, the stars died and were reborn in her eyes. Zora and Inara have grown up in the citadel of the Paladin, in an abandoned fortress where legendary magical warriors once lived before disappearing from the world, including their Paladin father on the night Inara was born. That same night, a massive enchanted hedge grew and imprisoned them within the citadel. Inara inherited her father their father's paladin power her eyes glow blue and she's able to make plants grow at unbelievable rates but she's been trapped in her own mind because of a roar that drowns out everything out drowns everything else out leaving zura virtually alone with their emotionally broken human mother for 15 years they've lived trapped inside the citadel with little contact from the outside world until the day a stranger passes through the hedge and everything changes <laughs> that seems interesting Seems cool. It seems like a fairy tale. I think it sounds cool. It's one of the few books that sound good out of the, all of these. This one seems weird, too. Weird cool, maybe? Maybe. Weird maybe. This one you're probably not going to like. That one, just by looking at the cover, <laughs> I'm going to say weird definitely not. If I never met you. <sighs> what Life would be so much easier. When her partner of over a decade suddenly ends things, Lori is left reeling, and not only because they work at the same law firm and she has to see him every day, her once perfect life is in shambles, and the thought of dating again in the at the age of Tinder or in the age of Tinder is nothing short of horrifying. When news of her ex ex's pregnant girlfriend hits the office grapevine, taking the humiliation lying down is not an option. Then a chance encounter in a broken down elevator with the office Playboy opens up a new possibility. Why would you even buy that book? I didn't. Oh. It was sent to me. Comes out in March. It's not even out yet. It sounds terrible. This one has gotten some pretty, like... It sounds like a CW show. Yeah. This one has gotten a lot of, like, early hype. This one comes out in March as well. The Bone Crier's Moon. And I've seen a few people, like, talk about it already bone criers have a sacred duty to ferry the spirits of dead into the afterlife lest they drain the light from the living but a bone crier's power requires sacrifice elise has been prepared since birth to become their matriarch but first she must complete her rite of passage to kill the boy she's destined to love bastion's father was slain by a bone crier and he's been seeking revenge ever since now his vengeance must wait as elise's ritual has begun and their fates are entwined in life and death High stakes and possible romance audiences will swoon over. Mm. That's me swooning. That's what swoon, swoon is, right? No, this is. Uh, it's a book. It's Idiot. a sequel to that other one. You were like, I've never seen this book before in my life. 
I, that was you earlier. I had never seen that book before in my life. And um, this was on like. Super look, here's the thing, though. I see the book when you get it in. I I see the book when we're cleaning the book. I see the book when we're review when we're doing the 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 haul. I see the book thirty more times when I'm editing it, and then. So therefore, I never saw that other book. I don't think we ever hauled it. So the first book in this is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. I got this book for like a few dollars on Book Outlet, and I figured I would get it, even though I never read the first one. I need to stop doing that. Yeah. But this is European travel for the monstrous gentlewoman. So these books have a lot of old school like fantasy characters and type monsters that they put together in like all in one place like this one i don't i don't know if i should tell you this then don't but whatever if you don't want to know don't listen mary jekyll's life has been peaceful since she helped sherlock holmes and dr watson solve the Whitechapel murders did that happen in the first book i'm guessing um are you sure it's a direct sequel it could just be like a companion book but when Mary receives a telegram that Lucinda Van Helsing has been kidnapped, oh. <laughs> the Athena Club must travel to the Austro-Hungarian Empire to rescue yet another young woman who's been subjected to hor horrific experimentation. So it's like, it's a weird story that mixes like mystery with like a bunch of like historical like characters. And it's like there's a cat lady on there too. Yeah. Or a dude. Oh yeah. That's a lady. Uh, I don't know. They seem interesting to me. There's something on the cover, too. Oh, is it the blue? Oh, no. Yeah, it's I think it's just like the... The book publisher logo? Yeah. yeah. I have heard a lot of good things about this fantasy series. Can I see the cover? It is set in Dungeons... Or it's a Dungeons & Dragons <gasps> book. And keep going. I bought it with my birthday gift card. Okay. Because I've got... I've had this book recommended to me several times. I don't know if that is a little thing hanging out of his mouth. Or it's a... Oh. Dust. It's dust. So it's called Dragons of Autumn Twilight. It looks... Uh, Super fantasy. Yeah. By Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. It says, Lifelong friends, they went their separate ways. Now they're together again, though each holds secrets from the other in, their, in his heart. Uh, they speak of a world shadowed with rumors of war. They speak of tales of strange monsters, creatures of myth, Creatures of legend. They do not speak of their secrets. Not then. Not until a chance encounter with a beautiful, sorrowful woman who bears a magical crystal staff draws the companions deeper into the shadows, forever changing their lives and shaping the fate of the world. No one expected them to be heroes, least of all themselves. Hmm. Wizards of the Coast. Well, that that's who owns D&D. What do you think? It's a all long right. book. Ooh, it smells bad not great like old book so i got you know the smell of older book that's what it smells like an older book your two sequels to your favorite book oh, of last year god it was not it wasn't my favorite book of last year it's probably your least favorite um so the obelisk gate and the stone sky these are both sequels to i the wanted to like it i really did because you liked it so much and i was like i want to be a part of this with you I think it'll be cool. And I mean, I gave it a, I, I gave it a try. <laughs> I, old college try. I gave it a college try. Like it just several, like three times. So, I got like 70% through it. I know. So the next one is The Obelisk Gate. So this is on my list of books to read in 2020. So I will be reading it this year. Um, I hope pretty soon. So I remember what happened, like I, that I could still remember what happened in the last one. Nothing. Um, Nothing good, at least. Yes. So you don't have to worry I about thought it. the first book was so freaking good. He doesn't like it, whatever. And it's not just him. A lot of people agree with him. And it was one of my favorite books of the year. And um, it's just super, like, mysterious. And the world itself is mysterious. And there's such cool things going on. I think the magic system is pretty cool. Like, whatever. You can hate on it all you want. I love it. Just not for me. Now, I'm super, super, super excited to finally have a copy of this book again. It is the classic fairy tales. Um, this is actually technically a textbook. So I took a college course. This, back... isn't, a, this isn't a textbook. It is. You're lying to me. <sighs> so, How so? 
I took a college course. Smells like a college book. Um, before I, I decided smarter. I wanted to be a nurse. And it's basically... So, like, when everyone thinks of, like, old fairy tales and the original fairy tale story, they always think of the Brothers Grimm or whatever. This has multiple accounts of several stories, like old school fairy tales. Um, and basically, like, we studied this book as, like, comparing Disney to old school fairy tales. And, um... There were several people, like, involved in this that, like, a long time ago tried to gather all of the stories as they were told by word of mouth, like, around campfires and where the original, like, fairy tales came from. So, this is, like, a compendium of, like, all of them. So, you have Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, Little Red Riding Hood, um, The Nightingale... I mean, there's literally, like, so many in here. Franz and the Knickerbocker. Breaking the Disney spell. So, it is... It is a textbook. Yeah, it's literally, like... I wish I... I don't know, like, where there's, like, a... Right there. Books don't Introduction. Have that. That's nothing but a fairy tale. Dismissive phrases like this one ignore just how powerfully the world of make-believe is implicated in the making of beliefs. Storytelling is anything but frivolous, juvenile, shallow, and inconsequential. If fairy tales have a high quote, quotient of weirdness, it's because they recruit the extraordinary to help us understand the ordinary and what lies beneath it. Um, blah, blah, blah. The term fairy tale has not served the genre well. The, uh, sprightly, the sprightly supernatural creatures featured so prominently in the name rarely make, in the name rarely make an appearance in the representative stories. There are no fairies in Little Red Riding Hood, Jack and the Beanstalk, blah, blah, blah. Bear no resemblance to woodland creatures. It just, like... So what happens is it'll go through, like, Little Red Riding Hood. And it'll tell you about the originals and who, like, sought out to find the original tales. And pretty much every single fairy tale in this book is super crazy and super gruesome. And, like, has a lot of, like, murder and rape and, like, all this crazy stuff. Oh, that's the one that... That's how where you learned all that stuff? Yeah. Hmm. So I lent this to a friend of mine uh, back in the day. They never returned it. Who's the friend? We are no longer friends. Who's the friend? You know who. So we're not friends anymore, and I never got it back. And I've wanted it ever since. I think I originally paid like $75 for it because, you know, in college you have to buy them at university, and, like, they end up being $1,000. But I think I got this on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Wow, that's expensive It's expensive. Still. It's a textbook, but I've Ugh. wanted it back ever since I Ugh. lost it. And this book is the reason why I don't lend books out anymore. Or movies. Yeah, I lost a copy of Frozen too. Frozen. Frozen one. also. <laughs> um, I was pissed about that. Because like, I was just like, what did I say? We don't lend things out, especially to little kids. So I just got this randomly sent to me in the mail the other day. It's called Follow Me to the Ground by Sue Rainsford. That means death. Follow Me to the Ground? Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to die together. It's about suicide. Ada and, and her father, cult. touched by the power to heal illness, oh, live one. on the edge of a village where they help sick locals or cures by cracking open their damaged bodies or temporarily burying them in the reviving dangerous ground nearby. All right, I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. This sounds way better. Ada, a being both more and less than human, is mostly uninterested in the cures until she meets a man named Samson where they strike up an affair to the displeasure of her father and Samson's widowed pregnant sister. Ada is torn between her old way of life and new possibilities with her lover and eventually comes to a decision that will forever change Samson, the town, and the ground itself. Fascinating and frightening, urgent and repulsive. Da 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 da. Seems interesting. Seems I mean, weird. super short. Did you show this cover? Oh, wait, that's um, old. Yeah. Show the cover, Meek. Super boring. Blue. Ooh, I'm pretty excited about this one. The Pirate Wars. Yeah, by Peter Earle. So this is like... Um... Talking about, like, real pirates and, like, the story behind pirates, I believe. I got this on Book Outlet. The Pirate Wars takes the romantic fable of ocean-going Robin Hood sailing under the banner of King's Death and contrasts it with the murderous reality of robbery, torture, and murder on the high seas. 
Noted maritime historian Peter Earle charts centuries of piracy from Cornwall to the Caribbean from the 16th century to the hanging of the last pirate captain in Boston in 1835. Along the way, we meet characters like Edward Teach, the notorious Blackbeard, the treasure-hungry Captain Kidd, and dreaded coursers um, of Barbary, and the defiant buccaneers of the West Indies. It just seems really neat. So, I got it when it was on sale. Well, you always up with you in textbooks lately. You're I don't like, know. I'm getting old, I you're guess. You're all about, like, old people books now. You're like an adult or something. It sounds cool. It does. But you're not going to read it. Let's, I'll read let's, it. Let's I'm be, reading everything. Let's be honest Shut here. You're, you're, you're never going to read it. Come on. So this one is The Wood by Chelsea B B B Bobolsky. I got this also on Book Outlet. Winter didn't ask to be the guardian of the wood, but when her dad inexpli inexplicably vanishes, she's one who must protect travelers who accidentally slip through its portals. The wood is poisoned, changing into something more sinister. Once brightly colored leaves are now bubbling inky black. Vicious creatures that live in the shadows are becoming bolder, torturing lost travelers. Winter must then put her trust in Henry, a young man from 18th century England who knows more than he should about the wood, in order to find the truth and maybe those they've lost. Seems cool. The dog distracted me. I don't know what it's about. Read it again. No. Watch it when you, like, edit. I will. <laughs> um, this is another oh, one. Oh, that lady's falling. She yeah. can't get up. She's not going to get up after that fall, at least. This is a, another, like, adult, like, I think, oh, thriller. another one. That I found on Book Outlet. Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. I know you, but what do you think about the book? My name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. I'm in a coma, my husband doesn't love me anymore, and sometimes I lie. Amber Reynolds wakes up in a hospital. She can't move, she can't speak, and she can't open her eyes. She can hear everyone around her, but they have no idea. She doesn't remember what happened to her, but she has a sneaking suspicion her husband had something to do with it, or her sister, or maybe both. Terrified and trapped inside her own body, she slowly begins to remember a night that changed her life. Is she in a coma due to an accident? Is her sister having an affair with her husband? What happened at work with her horrible boss? And who is the person who's silently visiting her bedside each night? Alternating between her paralyzed present, the week before her accident, and a series of childhood diaries from 20 years ago, Sometimes I Lie builds to an ending that will leave readers speechless. That seems cool. I hear it's really good. Which is why I want All right, to. so we went from adults... To Naruto... So these are just side stories. But they're actual novels. They are actual books. Um, these two are Itachi and this is Sasuke. So we now officially own every single Naruto book there is. Mm. Well, no, Shippuden. Ma comic. What? Naruto, Shippuden. Naruto and Shippuden. Yeah, both. Not Baruto. No. Which no, is technically no. Naruto. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't own those. Oh, look. Sharingan. Oh. Does that mean that his goes higher than his? Who the heck knows? He goes into Spoilers! that Spoilers! So this book, and I, I don't know if the other two, like it's a trilogy, and I don't know if the other two are as famous, but it's a pretty famous book called The Passage by Justin Cronin. It's a vampire story from what I've heard. It's actually called A Novel. <clears throat> Jeez. The Passage. This book is deceptively long. Guess how much it is. Uh, 933. No, 780. So it's not. You just deceived me. It does not look 780 pages. It looks humongous. Named one of the 10 best novels of the year. An epic and gripping tale of a catastrophe and survival. The passage is the story of Amy. Abandoned by her mother. Why would you do that? Who the hell is that? At the age of six, pursued and then imprisoned by the shadowy figures behind a government experiment of apocalyptic proportions. But Special Agent Brad, uh, the lawman sent to track her down, is disarmed by the curiously quiet girl and risks everything to save her. Uh, I think, did they make a movie about this recently or a show? I want to say they did. Soon to be a Fox series. I wasn't listening. What was it again? Are you serious? What is wrong with you? I was trying to understand this picture. My bad. It's about vampires. It is? Yes. Was it a show? It's going to be a show. I don't know when. Oh, vampires? Yeah. I don't know about that. Ghosts of the Missing by Kathleen Donahue. Donahue. Hugh. Oh, 
whatever. I uh, I don't think it's Donahoe, just so you know. Do you I know H O E? Maybe it is Donahoe. Um, she's confused. She's looking off to the side. She, the guy's like, all right, say cheese. And she's like, what's over there? This book comes out next Ajay, month. She's just like looking to the side. Why would they do that? I don't know. Look at, look at the camera. It's like we're taking a picture. Okay. Um, It comes out next month. It says, on October 28th, 1995, a girl vanished. Rowan was not a child particularly prized in town. When questioned by reporters, she was described by those who'd known her as a loner, shy and awkward. Words for pity. Culleton, New York, has a long history of writers, artists, and unsolved mysteries. Da 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 da. I don't get this. I don't want to read all this. Okay. Then don't. It's where Adair grew up before she moved to Brooklyn to make it as an artist. But after years away from her hometown and little to show for it, she decides to return. She moved back to Moy House, the old mansion, now a writer's <laughs> retreat. What? She moved back to Moy House. Moy. Moy House. Yeah, I don't. I, where's the ghost stuff? I stopped listening. Uh, I've I've listened to a lot of synapses. They're all kind of starting to blend, and merge together now. I won't go through the synapses because I already hauled this book. But they sent me this. This is a sequel to another book. The Andromeda Evolution. The Andromeda Strain. Ew. But yeah, it's like a sequel to the first one. I can't remember the name of the first one. Yeah, you're right. The Andromeda Strain. How did you know? Names get stuck <laughs> in my head and sometimes they... Uh... But yeah, they gave me a final <laughs> copy of it. I know I heard Andromeda Strain before. And I don't was... know if I'm going to like this book, but it comes out this month. And this is the last book. Almost just friends. Piper Manning is about as tough as they came. Come. <laughs> She's had to be. She raised her siblings and they've finally flown the coop. All she has to do is finish fixing up the lake house. Her grandparents... Cramp... Grandparents. Grandparents left for her and sell it and then she's free. When a massive storm hits, Piper runs into a tall, dark, and brooding stranger, Camden Hayes. There's a spark there, one that shocks her, surprising her further... Her sister and brother return, each of them keeping their own secrets. The smart move would be for Piper to ignore them all, but Cam unleashes emotions deep inside of her that she can't deny. Eh, it's a romance. I can't deny it. I'm a liar. You okay, doggy? She's like, yeah. <laughs> you stuck your tongue in my mouth. Oh, dude. dude. Dude, that hits you in the face. Oh, that's. You're a stinky doggy. That is a killer. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you stay tuned this far, I'm very proud of you. And oh. what? Only because you were bored. <laughs> um, because I barely stayed tuned this this long. No, I'm just kidding. I'm um, just tired. We did a lot today. We did a lot this a lot. whole. New Year's, couple days. I think since Christmas, Christmas. Meek, you need to just like learn how to speak English. Like it's your only language that you know how to speak. You fluently. We've, we've been very busy. <laughs> yeah, think think your words good right before we've say been them. Very busy. And uh, we have a lot more stuff like this coming out, and um, a unhaul, which is behind me over there. Uh, with a bunch of books, um, like a ton of, like probably as many as we got here, but over there. Yeah, we're getting rid of. Um, so that's going to be fun. We've got some other book stuff coming out. Uh, we got some new ideas coming out this year for different types of videos. So hopefully you guys stay tuned and um, leave a comment down below. If you do leave a comment, let us know anything about these books, but also include the word. Can I do one? Sure. Remote. Okay. Yeah. Random. So that's the point. That's 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 how you that's how you roll. You said lion once. I did. So that's pretty <laughs> random. Um, yeah, that's it. I think right. If you guys want to support us on uh, Patreon, go check that out. You can join the Discord if you do and uh, talk to us about books and uh, mostly her. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I will respond if you ask me something specific about books, but usually like I'm just a co-host when it comes to the book stuff, you know.
Say bye, nine. She's so tired. She's like... No, you gotta say bye that way. Thank you, Dad. Bye. She's so chill, dude. She's, She's such like, a chill whatever. dog. Uh, all right, Meek, say bye. Bye, Meek. Bye, bye, bye.